Right, good morning. I'm off on a little cycle trip. I didn't, I kind of fancied the idea for about a week, although I've had this uh, route planned for a couple of years. But until about an hour after I got up this morning, I wasn't intending to go. I was going to stop at home because I was knackered after some work I did yesterday on my garden. And, uh, but I felt a bit better this morning, so I've decided to go on this little cycling trip. Just be two nights camping, hopefully, and I'm going to uh, cycle along the River Saw through Leicester to Nottingham and then follow the trend all the way up to Barton on Humber, where Helen, who's kindly holding the camera, is visiting a friend and uh, she's going to give me a lift back. So we'll get off on this trip and we'll see how we get on. <music> It's not so easy filming uh, when you're cycling and I haven't done that much filming really so sorry about that to my regular viewers but uh, I've made it as far as Gunthorpe Bridge which is 50 miles on the, the old bicycle and uh, I got chatting to a, a motorcyclist at the pub I had a couple of pints there I had a burger and fries which was it was horrible. What a waste of money. Burger and fries and a pint, 20 quid. Anyway, he said, oh, there's a bit of like nature reserve uh, about half a mile from the pub, back the way I'd come, but on the opposite side of the river. And he said, uh, you'll probably find somewhere to camp there. He's, he's a local bloke. He says he walks around there quite a bit. And, uh, so I'm going to pitch down here. It's a bit lumpy bumpy and there's a few young thistles, but I think I'll manage it. Should be all right. And uh, got lost loads of times coming through Nottingham. Oh my God, there was a diversion be initially um, because they were putting in all this new pipeline. So I had to divert. Uh, and the signposting is not what it is in Leicester. Or maybe I'm just familiar with Leicester. Uh, the sign post posting through Nottingham is terrible and, and it seems like every other cycling signpost has been knocked round and pointing the wrong way as well. But anyway, I made it through, uh, through Nottingham and tomorrow I'll be on Country Lane so should get a bit more speed up there. So what I'm doing is cycling from Leicester, I've cycled along the River Saw down to the Trent, Trent Lock, where the saw enters a Trent, and then I'm following the Trent as close as I can up to Barton upon Humber Way, where Helen is stopping with a friend for a couple of nights, and then I shall get to her friend's uh, Sunday afternoon, and uh, we'll be on our way back. I'll speak to you a bit later. Thanks for watching. Well, as you may have noticed, I've got my old Van Gogh helium tent out and I haven't used this for uh, just over three years since I've had the top tent notch. There's some low fine geese. Wow. And uh, of course, my notch, you need trekking poles and it's not that's not ideal on the push bike. So got up into the loft and got me helium out. Uh, yeah. It's absolutely fine for this sort of thing. Seems a bit more claustrophobic than the notch. It's sort of a darker colour, but it's a bit better for stealthier camping being uh, green anyway. Oh, I mean, this is a tight squeeze compared to the notch. You know, forgotten how small it is. 
Can I bloody get inside it? That's the thing. Ooh. It's not going to be as breathable as the notch either. It, uh... Yeah, I'm going to have a lay down. Lay down for a bit, sort a bit of stuff out because I rammed a few things in the very last minute because uh, I didn't really decide to come on this trip until about an hour before I set off. So, anyway, the going's good. Ooh. Got my Thermarest Uber light. No ground sheet, because this is a, a nylon ground sheet on the tent. It's a bit more puncture resistant. And uh, my summer lightweight sleeping bag. No pillow, I've gone back to stuffing the stuff sack with all the clothes you're not using. Got way too much stuff that I don't really need on this trip because it's so hot, it's boiling. You know, I was going to check out this campsite. In fact, I it was behind the pub, uh, about 100 yards away. And I went to it and there was like, it was like gated security uh, check-in thing. And there was a big sign up. Uh, members only, some sort of green space camping site. Members only, join here. And I thought, oh, I can't be bothered with that malarkey. I'll just go and find somewhere like the, the motorcyclist told me about. So at least you don't have to put up with other people. It was bad enough going in the pub. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, yeah. Had a pint of Wainwrights and a pint of Guinness. The bloody meal was terrible. God, I should have had a bloody one of my meals. I should have had a, a real eat meal. Would have been better off. Anyway, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow if not later on. Just had a lovely little chat with a lady and a young lad, probably about 11, walking a dog and uh, you know, I just broke a conversation with them, you know, that's the sort of thing I do. And uh, turns out she lives, uh, she's from near Gaul, where my my wife's stopping with a friend for two nights. And uh, and the young lad said, to, he said to me, he said, are you out camping? I said, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it surprised me really that, I mean, it's, Everybody seems to know about it these days while well, camping, yeah. So there you go. There was a lovely little chat with the lad and uh, and uh, his mum. So I'm going to make myself a, a cup of coffee, I think. And uh, I've got no snacks. I don't really need any after that horrible burger. But I've got some cereal for the morning. So I'm going to have a coffee and enjoy watching the, the sun go down over there. Just had a load of rooks or crows fly over. Off back to the roost for the night. Yeah, it makes a nice refreshing change to get out, especially when the weather's like this. Get out, have a little holiday, a break from being at home. Good job we're not full on into bug season. It would be... Uh, really nice at this time of year when there's not so many not so many biting insects out see a few twinkling lights on the hillside over there it'll be a good dawn chorus in the morning yeah I wanted to cycle down the saw and the Trent because I wanted to get a feel for the history of human civilization along the banks of these great rivers because back in history 
you know, the first sort of settlers would have been along these rivers and, you know, a good source of food, an easy way to travel and and also there's industrial history as well you know the you know importing goods exporting goods using the river is quite interesting really good morning i've just woke up it's half past six i think i've woke up on and off uh, since it started to get light i'm not quite sure what time that would have been but i just woke up in a bit of a panic because uh, i was having a dream i was with steve from hengis wild camps and we were on this train in the northwest of scotland and we were busy chatting and we got off the train and we were walking through the town chatting where's my phone where's my rucksack where's my poles we both left all our kit on the train. Oh my God, and I, I was getting really frustrated and and um, we, we went back to the train station and the, the, the lady said, oh, you've got plenty of time to get to the, to the end of the line, you know, to get your bags back before the train gets there. And, oh, what a nightmare. <laughs> The tent will let some of this stuffy air out. This tent holds the uh, holds the air in a lot better than the the the, the Dyneema notch does. It's so stuffy in here, <laughs> and, uh, and there's so much. Uh, can you see that? There is so much dew. It was such a warm day, and uh, I don't know if you can see the dew there, but it was such a warm day yesterday. It must have created loads of dew, and the inside of the tent here is absolutely soaking wet. I'm sure my te tiny my tent wouldn't have been like that, but. Then again, it's been a while since I've camped somewhere and there's been this much dew like this. It's the, it's the way the sort of temperature of the night and day's been, I think. Right, let's get to, let's have a wee. What I'm gonna do is pack up because everywhere is so wet and go and sit on the picnic benches at Gunthorpe Bridge and have a cup of coffee and uh, my breakfast there. That's what I'll do. Beneath the starlit sky, our love's secret line, like waves we soar so high. Beneath the moonlight, self touch your hand in mine. Oh, it gets me in. Let's sit down at Gunthorpe Bridge and have a drop of breakfast. It's lovely along here. Yeah. Really As nice. Gorgeous river and all these buttercups. This is Beneath the endless 
Yeah, a, Sam Martin's going crazy over here on the banks there. The, there's just loads of them. The guy I was just speaking to in this panel for BT band, about the same age as me. Yeah, he says up until a few weeks ago, the, the river was right up to, almost up to the bench here. So that would be blooming frightening, but uh, seen a few herons and, but the, obviously the duck. But you can see all the uh, sand martin nests over there. And they're chirping, when they fly through the air, come past me. Yeah, they're really chirping on the wings, beautiful. Maybe this is the season of love. Maybe this is the season of love. It's so bumpy, bumpy. Oh my god. Nice to get in this bit of woodland. Hey, up downhill. Just come up a bit of an hill. Now going downhill. Not many hills on this journey. Just a very steady downhill to the sea. It's all eating and drinking and uh, stopping at places yeah. for a can of ginger sure. beer. And the, this time it's a Cornish pasty. Can do, it's short there, but it's a nice one too. So this road is like a, a big main road. <laughs> no potholes like the lanes really. But there's there's practically no traffic on it at all. It is so quiet. It's such a big road. I think it's uh, probably a, a good road because there's a couple of massive electricity places along here, and then there's a big power station ahead over there. So um, that's probably why it's a better road. Just stop for one. Because I've never come across a village hall. I was hoping I'd come across a village hall and I could use the toilet. But, uh, so I thought while I'm here, I may as well get my tent out and dry it off. Ready for tonight. So, you know what I've bloody gone and done? A special sort of uh, capture camera clip I, I have for my tripod that I use for my big camera as well and my phone I bloody put it on the back of my bike this morning and it's it's come off and I bloody lost it and it cost a hundred quid so a bit like Steve losing his poles I can't get it out of my mind I've just checked in my bags it's not in there anyway what a glorious countryside yeah this is a ride to remember I definitely think I prefer the hiking in the hills. It's it's just all, I suppose there's something to this off-road cycling, but you've got to get geared up for that. And it's probably hard work. I'm not going to get into that. But a bit of road cycling, yeah. Yeah, it, it's okay. It's, it has its place, but uh, it's not as good as walking in the hills. Not a patch on it. Not a patch. So I, I thought it might be all right, but... Yeah, God knows how these people cycle around the world. Bloody hell, I was a lorry driver for all them years. I'm fed up with the tarmac, really. So, yeah, and as for this tent, when you compare it to a modern Dyneema tent, there's some similar proportions like the one I've got. It's bloody rubbish. Really, bloody rubbish. Never mind. The iron arms, 
Well, a lovely pub that is inside. Looks like they do some good food as well. Cheers. Nice beer. Cheers. That's called Spring Ale. Oh, it's, it's, it's a bit citrusy, a bit hoppy. Very nice. Ooh. Smooth as you like. So I've come down this old, old road before they built the new one. And it's clearly marked on the map as a crossing there. Byway on the old road. Marked as a cycle route. The padlock, the gates, you can't cross a railway line. I don't blame them, but come on, Nottinghamshire County Council. How about a bit better signage? Never mind. Here we are, Gainsborough. Turn left and along the river. The old toll booths for this bridge. God, the river's getting powerful now. That is swirling, swirling song that is. It's deep. Of course, all along the uh, quayside here, it's all industrial warehousing from years ago when this was a docks uh, town. I'm in Gainsborough in the Weatherspoons. Ordered one pint of uh, mild, 3.6. Then I thought, no, I'm bloody starving, I've got a shake. So I've gone for the meal deal, which is nine quid for a veggie burger and another pint of mild. So uh, I need to rehydrate, of course. Bloody hell, I've not really been in Weatherspoons much before. Bloody fantastic value, isn't there? And this one in Gaines was really nice. Really nice place. When you think I paid 20 quid for a pint and an absolute rubbish burger at that point at uh, Bunthorpe Bridge, and I paid nine quid here. God. Anyway, all's good. That little veggie burger were nice. I'm sure it couldn't just have been the price, would it? It actually was quite nice. I feel a bit better now. Not so wobbly. Let's get on my second pint. <sighs> this is it, my old mateys. A couple of miles outside Gainsborough, along the river. And uh, there was a lot like a little parking picnic area. And this is the bank here, the river's on the other side. The river's scary, deep, black, muddy. So it's not like the nicest thing to camp next to. The little quiet country road runs along the river, it is the other side of this hedge. And then this is like a little, people obviously walk along here, walk the dogs. So my tent is gonna go there. And it's out the wind, cause the wind's picked up big time. It's nice and uh, still just here. No views. Who needs a view? I've had a view all day. So, just want to relax in the warm sunshine out of the wind. And this'll do, this'll do. That's it, we're all set up. Chatted to a lady that went by there on a horse and then two young lads walking the dog. Uh, they were they had the socks and had a little chat asked about wild camping and stuff and, and they says what about your bike can you afraid somebody will nick your bike i said well what can you do and i says that's that's it it's only an old bike anyway he says it's a rough lot around here and he says it's a good job you're not camping any closer to gainsborough i nearly did <laughs> I nearly did but i'm glad i pushed on a bit more Hopefully we won't see anybody else tonight. So that's another 50 miles today and to get to where Helen is, uh, she wants me to get there around lunchtime to enjoy some dinner with her and a friend. That's another 40 miles. So maybe an early start tomorrow and we'll, we'll see how much of that I can clock off by 
say half past one. If I don't go in every cafe and pub at lunchtime, I might be able to make it. So, oops. gonna have a, a real term at, because uh, I'm fed up with these burgers from the pubs. <laughs> A real term at beef and potato uh, stew for lunch now for dinner because I still feel quite hungry so I've only had a pasty and that tiny burger today and, a, and one little chocolate brownie and uh, so I'm gonna have a beef potato stew and a, and a coffee I've just been kind of lying down for about an hour and 15 minutes Everybody's been look, seeing this, uh, the Ouroboros just lately camping. I'm going to have a look tonight, see if I can see it. That'd be interesting. I've never seen uh, seen one before, so amazing. Another couple of young lads come along walking the dog. Anyway, they were really nice. Local lads from Gainsborough. I'll be having nightmares again tonight, won't I? People bloody coming up, trying to nick me by. Oh well. Oh well, what can you do? What can you do? Oh, blackbirds chirping well. I love them at night, when they're, in the evening when they chirp like that. I'm not quite sure what they're saying. It's pr probably territorial. I remember when I was a kid playing out and over the fields and it was getting dark and you know it'd always be the blackbird, the last one chirping. Beautiful. There's bats going up and down uh, just above the tent now. Good morning, it's uh, been awake for about an hour, it's six o'clock now and unusually for me I thought I'd make a coffee while I'm still in bed so I'm going to do that and uh, I'm going to have my cereal as well so looks a little bit misty this morning along the river. That's a bit more like it, isn't it? Listening to the the religious spiritual chat now. It's a bit early in the morning for that, but um, I used to be fascinated by it years ago. I used to watch songs of praise. Glory, that seems old fashioned now, doesn't it? And I used to, I mean, it's going back decades and always used to listen to it on the radio in the morning when I woke up Sunday morning put the put the religious stuff on it's all chat isn't it all chat I suppose your, your feelings have to be expressed how you feel. But it's the reality of what you feel that's what it's all about. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm born and over. Being a container, when you feel a bit contained and refrained rather than free to do your thing. 
I hope she's not been being paid for 30 years to study religion and spirituality at the taxpayer's expense. Oh my God, I'll get shot for that, won't I? What was this? Oh yeah, I'm a fuzzy attraction. Mm, God, no wonder I was a lorry driver. I know how to turn a wheel and put my foot down. That's that's about it. Oh, oh my God, beat around the bush. I bet you are. <laughs> Excuse my commentary. It's something we all do, isn't it? When you're watching telly at home, you're watching one of those uh, really crap romance movies, and uh, and it's like you you find yourself giving a, a running running commentary as uh, sort to the uh, how pathetic it is. Almost put her in touch with it. Rather than having to connect with that energy through the confines of maybe like a church or through um, another person. Anyway, that's enough of that waffling bollocks for this morning. I'm going to finish my cereal off and enjoy my coffee. To do something with them. Um, it's basically where I shuffle the cards and see what the universe throws out there. And then what? I interpret the meaning based on my own intuition um, to provide further guidance. Shuffle the cards and see what the universe has got for me. Bloody hell. Oh, I'm sinking into my mat. It's giving me a backache. I've just continued to listen to the radio uh, on the spiritual chat. And I've just done a bloody long PC camera. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't switched on typically. But I, I, just of what I was thinking was uh, everybody's entitled Everybody's got their own point of view. There's as many points of view as there are people on the planet. What a load of waffling bollocks at breakfast. What blame the radio listening to that? There's the a van look, that's on the road I'll be taking up there. Once I get all my gear together, which I packed it all up, just got to put it in the panniers and roll my tent down. So, which is soaking wet again. I never, I don't, I've never had that trouble with the Dyneema tent. It's always been pretty dry, really. <laughs> Also last night, uh, some owls as well. Two nice girls just said hello.
this bridge at one time used to swivel open, lift up with these great big arms here and the holes connected with these uh, teeth here. It's on the map where I'm going, Pollington. That's where Helen is. Not far now. Been following this Transpennine Trail for a few miles. And uh, yeah, not far now. Getting a sweaty bum, I know that. Bloody hell. <laughs> I'm sure you wanted to know that. Anyway, it's been a great trip. It's been a, it's been a great trip. A bit like the last one. I was reluctant to start with, you know, the first day always feels like hard work. But uh, once I got going, you know, today, you know, I just thought, oh, I could keep going if I didn't get a sore bum, that is. <laughs> but uh, no, three days is plenty. And the weather's been absolutely gorgeous. So, so I'm on my way now to Helen's friends and a uh, bit of lunch, bit of a rest and then back home back home plenty to do at home hey 